Hello everybody. Um, today I want to talk to you about a DAW called Reaper. Uh, I came over to Reaper, previously I was using Logic and before that I spent some years using Pro Tools. Um, I've really enjoyed the transition over to this program. I've been using it pretty consistently as my main DAW for a few years. Um, I would say there's kind of an initial shock of, okay, this, this program doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles as far as plugins, but that's almost been part of the selling point for me. As somebody who's uh, been in, around audio equipment, there's always this kind of desire for the next piece of gear. Well, by needing to kind of seek out some cool free plugins, oftentimes even, it kind of fills that void of wanting to find something else that makes a cool new sound um, that we're all in the pursuit of. Um, if you're used to other programs, I think that there's ways to make this transition to uh, Reaper feel a little bit smoother. So I just want to talk to you about some of those things today, some of the reasons why I like this program so much. Hope you enjoy. So for starters, let me just say that I have this kind of weird split screen setup going on as far as my mix window and my editing window because I typically run two monitors, but for the sake of the screen report recording, I just went ahead and put them side by side on one screen. So I usually have a different setup as far as uh, the way my layout is, but it gives you a good idea of what I'm doing here. Um, so I just kind of want to talk to you about why I like this recording program so much. Um, obviously there's the cost, that's the most obvious thing that everybody sees. But just as far as me using it quite a bit now, uh, I want to talk about a little bit more about why, uh, why I've really fully switched over to this. I've used Pro Tools in the past, I've used Logic, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that those programs are bad but I've just been really impressed with how much this thing can do um, and I'm gonna stick with it. So I'll go ahead and show you what I like about it now. Okay, so first thing I wanna show you, I've got this performance meter pulled up. Um, this is just monitoring your CPU usage and your RAM use, disk read and write speed, all that kind of stuff. And this is actually within Reaper that they offer this little uh, meter. And just to show you how you know, so many programs are crashing all the time. I had so many problems with that with uh, Pro Tools specifically. Um, less with Logic, but it still happened from time to time. I very rarely have anything happen like that with Reaper. Um, and I think part of that is just because the actual program does not draw that much on your computer. So we'll play a little section of the song. Mind you, I have uh, Context 7 running with, you know, quite a few different plugins here. Everything's been mastered to the best of my abilities. And there's also some bus sends, different things going on. So not a simple track, not nothing too crazy, but enough to, you know, get, get a computer going. And, uh, you know, even with all that, you know, there's not a lot of taxing going on in the CPU or the RAM. So let's go ahead and play a little section of this song. You'll see what I mean. So that's impressive no matter what specs you have on your computer, in my opinion, how minimal this program is actually pulling on your computer. Um, and to make it even more crazy, I'll show you the specs on my Mac. I have a 2018 Mac Mini, so the non-M1, with only 8 gigs of RAM, and it's the base CPU. And that's, you know, not even putting a sweat to it on a pretty low spec Mac by today's standards. So it's just insane how little processing power you need for this DAW. Okay, next thing that I think is really cool about this DAW is the customization options. Um, if you go to options down to themes, you have, you can download literally whatever you want your layout to be. Um, there's a bunch of people that submit them through the Reaper website. But for example, if you're really used to Pro Tools and the way it feels and looks, there's Pro Tools downloads that'll give you more of a Pro Tools layout here. Really similar layout. Um, there's obviously certain shortcuts you can assign to be whatever you want, but it's just uh, cool to see that it looks so similar to something you may already be used to and that would help you to transition a lot easier. Then for another example, if you're a logic guy, 
Here's more of a logic style layout. There's a, I mean, there's a ton of these things, so you can go and find whatever fits your needs. Um, but if there's a, if you're switching over from existing DAW to this, that's a huge, huge thing to just kind of have a level of familiarity um, on the layout, the styling. Um, so I think that's really cool that they've done that. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the plugins that come with Reaper. Um, they have the essentials. Uh, all of them work fine. There's a, here's just an example of a couple of them. Um, you can see the user interface is pretty basic. Not a lot going on for excitement here, but here's a delay. There's a compression. There's meters for the compression. Um, all the essential adjustments you may need to make. Um, there's nothing wrong with them at all, but they're definitely not very exciting. And I think part of that is to keep that CPU and RAM usage down on your computer. Um, that's kind of a selling point for Reaper. So their plugins are usually not very fancy, just doing the job. So with that being said, there are a ton of really good free plugins out right now. I'll give you a couple examples of ones that I really like. You have Valhalla Supermassive. I don't know how this plugin is free. It's awesome. Uh, it's great for if you want just a something simple for a vocal line or if you want to go as crazy as putting some wild ambient effects on anything. I even use it with my guitars. If I'm running my guitar direct through an, uh, an amp in the software, sounds awesome for everything. Um, this is uh, TSE made a Tech 21 Sans Amp bass DI um, in a plug-in format and it's very believable. Uh, really good sound. It's got the blend knob to be able to decide how much of that tone you want versus dry tone. There's the drive of it, really sounds similar to the breakup of the Tech 21 stuff. A saturation knob by Softube. This is just so simple, but I love it. Uh, it sounds great. A lot of times I use it on like a drum bus just to get a little bit of that to cut through the mix with that little bit of breakup. Um, yeah, it just works on a lot of really cool stuff. Um, and then Melda has some cool stuff. There's there's a free plug pack that they have. Um, this is a pitch correction thing. It's kind of just a simple one, but it works well if you need something to be kind of polished a little bit. You have to turn down the uh, speed super low for it to not sound kind of wild, but um, works great. And then there's a compressor here. Um, this, is a, this is kind of my go-to compressor. Oftentimes it's, it's a really good performing and easy to adjust compressor. I also want to mention Piano Book. Uh, it's a website where people are submitting a lot of really good sample libraries. Um, there's also now this plugin called Decent Sampler um, that allows you to use those sound libraries. Um, so I'll give you a couple quick examples. This is called Kawhi Felt Piano by John Meyer. Obviously, I'm not much of a piano player, but you get the idea. Okay, next one I want to show you is a guy who recorded some samples of his telly and turned it into this really good sound. Um, first one I'll show you is one called Swarm that he made. sound and then you can even just use it as more of a clean sound throw a little bit of reverb on it here this is more of a natural guitar sound here turn that volume down a little bit Unbelievable stuff, especially for free. Okay, last thing I want to mention is the fact that this um, also works as a video editor. Um, it doesn't have a ton of bells and whistles, uh, but it does a really good job. I've been pretty happy with what it's capable of. And then with that, um, you don't have to relearn your editing process in two different programs if you do both audio and video. Um, I get to use the same exact shortcuts and different little cut methods that I use when I'm working with audio as I do with video. So it's a lot easier to just kind of learn one program. 
The only thing you have to do to make it so it recognizes video um, is open a plugin called Video Processor. Well, and then you can just drag and drop video files the same way you would drag and drop in an audio file. And then there's a drop down of presets that allow you to do a lot of different types of edits. This is actually how I've made this whole video you're watching right now. Here's just a video window that shows uh, kind of an active playback of what you're working on. You can make that as big or as small as you want. So yeah, really works quite well for me. That's all I need. It does a great job. Okay, lastly, I just want to mention how great, uh, first of all, the creators of Reaper are. Uh, they send a ton of updates for this program constantly with no extra charge. Um, they also have a lot of resources on the website for ways to, uh, to kind of seek out different ideas of how to use Reaper. There's also a ton of really great people on YouTube going through tutorials on how to use it. Uh, it just really seems like the community really likes the idea of kind of going against the grain and using this program. Um, I've really enjoyed the process of getting familiar with it and uh, I, I just really think it's cool that uh, the community kind of supports the idea of this kind of new approach to doing things. So hope you guys enjoy the video. See you next time.